Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I want to talk to you about how we finish end grains on our current deck build. So if you like what you see today, don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. All right, so uh, if you follow me or maybe you know me through social media at all, you know that I'm kind of against doing miters on PVC decking because they're hard to keep together. You have to do a lot of work to prep those. And over the years, they just don't seem to stay. So I like to do a lot of uh, what I call butt joints where you actually overlap one board into another and then you face screw those and cortex them so they stay together for a really long time. The problem with that is that you end up with a raw end of a deck board or a piece of fascia or whatever you're trying to cover. And in the past, we have actually painted this just ran a file around it and painted it, and that looks okay, but then we decided, you know what? What if we made a piece that we could cap the actual end of the, of the board we're applying so that it actually looks like the end grain goes all the way around? So there's other techniques of doing this. You've seen us do folded corners. Yep, that's another way to do it. But that's also a lot of work. It's very time consuming. And if you don't set it up perfectly, you can be remaking parts and remaking parts. These are simple straight cuts. And we're gonna use some glue and activator to get this to stick. And it's, it's like PVC glue. It's like PVC cement on your sprinkler system. So once it heats up and you lock it in, it really doesn't go away. It doesn't dissolve, it doesn't fall apart. It kind of cements itself together, it bonds itself together just like PVC pipe on your sprinkler system. And usually once you uh, glue those together, they don't leak, they don't fall apart, they withstand pressure. So we're using that same technology, that same uh, idea and putting it into what we do. So you'll notice that once this is done, there's still gonna be an exposed edge right here. We're gonna take some color match paint and detail those and I'll show you, we're gonna do the whole process right now just to show you guys how it's done. So the first step you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to acquire some CA glue. Uh, I use a product called 2P10. It's designed for PVC decking and PVC parts. It works very well. This, is, uh, this one's a little bit of a rubberized texture to it. Uh, it's made by a company called FastCap. All right, you can find it on Amazon. 2P10, what 2P10 st stands for is two parts, 10 seconds, and it's done. So you gotta use your activator to get that 10 second action going. So this is the 2P10 activator. They sell this stuff in kits, they sell it by itself. Just depends what you have. Usually the activator lasts a long time. Uh, I have a couple cans of that. I have a couple bottles of this. I use it a lot. So I know I need to glue this part to here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this, simulating this as a full deck board. I just have this sample for you. I always put this part upside down because this is the part I'm gonna spray the activator to. Activator can stain PVC decking. So if you're sloppy with it, it can actually yellow. I don't know if you can see that, I sure can. You see the color difference? Can you see where I sprayed it? So if you spray that on your finished side, that might discolor. So you gotta be careful how much activator you use and where you put it on the board or else you can end up with a splotchy area which you will not be able to repair. Okay, with that being said, I'm gonna take the piece I wanna glue up and I'm gonna run a bead of glue right down the middle. And then I'm gonna take a scrap, a scrap piece and I'm just gonna kinda of smooth it out. Get it nice and smooth on there. Now the reason we didn't use this part is because it has a little bit extra saw kerf. Know in your mind that normally that would be a full width piece. Now you can make these a little bit thinner, but I've done it a few times and you know, it's, it's always good to have a little bit of meat to attach to. So now that I've got the glue where I want it, the reason I have the board upside down is so I can spray it and I can, if I overspray, it gets on the back side that you'll never see. There you go. Okay, you can see the yellowing on the back that doesn't matter, okay? If for some reason you're doing this as decorative and you need both sides of the board, then you gotta be really careful how much activator you spray. You can see the sheen. Okay, now I'm gonna flip the board over. See, this side's still in really good shape. Now all I gotta do, this is pretty instant, guys, so 
you gotta lay it out pretty good as you go. And then you just drag it around like so. And then you just give it 10 seconds. I'm gonna kind of hold it for about five seconds or so. Okay, now let me try to rip this off of here. <clears throat> it's stuck. <laughs> it's on there. So you can see the face. Here's the face of the board. Here's the end grain of the board. We got a little bit more work to do. You can kind of see there's some sharp edges on this right here. So we still need to file this out a little bit. So I'll take a rasp and I'll kind of run it around the curve of the board because the board has a little bit of a, a curved edge. And when you're making parts, be very careful. We did ours on a table saw, all right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and rasp the face of this a little bit just to break the edge. All right. So now you have basically your front and your face look good. I'm a little tall here. I probably could have done a little bit better job getting that piece on. So if I'm a little high, I might take my blade and just shave it like that and I'll file it again. Okay. So now we're ready for paint. I got this one done at a Home Depot and this is just a bare uh, color sample. It's $4 at the paint department. I have a paint code you can find on TimberTech's webpage for all their colors. They give you paint codes for Coastline and Dark Hickory. We just put a DH on here for Dark Hickory and we do this quite often. It's probably our most popular trim color so we use a lot of it. I use a fine detail brush and I'll just go through and I'll paint up this little end right here. And I'll paint the top because it got, uh, I had to shave it a little bit. You're not really gonna see the back side as much, but I paint it anyways too. It only takes a couple extra minutes. Okay, front's done. Let's get the back. You get a little extra on there, I always keep a towel handy. I mean, it's a pretty close color. It's almost an exact match. And I'll just kind of rub it and there you go. So once that paint dries, uh, it's a really, decent looking detail that you can do to your end grains. Now let's, I'll show you what that looks like on the deck. Okay, so here's my part that we just made. And basically if this was a long board, this would go on right here. So the grain kind of continues on. And then as you go around the corner, it still matches and the paint does a really good job of hiding that little tiny bit of end grain that you would see if you didn't have the paint match. but. You know, I think either way it looks really nice, but this is a this is kind of a nice way to button up and finish up those those details that maybe uh, just take a little bit more effort, but uh, looks so nice when the deck's finished. So hey guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like what you saw, you learned a little bit of something today. Don't forget to click that subscribe button, hit the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. And don't forget to like our page. Leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.